I really appreciate the chance to spend a few minutes with you uh, this morning and ponder on uh, what I think is an extraordinary opportunity in California. Uh, you, you, I really appreciated Cheryl's uh, quick reference to um, the puzzle pieces, right, of good comprehensive prevention planning. Um, and I was reflecting quickly back to a recent experience I had with my grandkids when we broke out a puzzle. And uh, we made a whole lot more progress putting that 500 piece puzzle together when uh, all the grandkids came to the table. Uh, and so it reminded me uh, once again of the power of collaboration. That's really what I'd like to spend the next uh, eight or 10 minutes talking with you about. You have heard uh, thus far from uh, Cheryl, uh, Troy, Stuart about what is really a, a visionary perspective about what's possible in California when it comes to prevention planning and want to in just in invite reflection on the criticality of the word comprehensive here, that we're talking about getting uh, for the first time in California in a meaningful way, a sustainable way to uh, really impact the social determinants of health. So it's prevention planning beyond child abuse and neglect. Uh, it is prevention planning in that most uh, comprehensive way. Uh, let me invite us to go to the next slide if I can. Um, and just give you a chance to reflect. These are some of the questions I hear from the field in my work with uh, both the state and some other work I do uh, with uh, county and uh, community-based systems. Um, so I just want to see if you can't find yourself uh, um, reflected here in some of these critical questions. Um, if you're worrying about uh, where you're going to find the resources with the workforce issues uh, um, uh, present, uh, to implement FFPSA, uh, if you're wondering about how you're going to do the match that's required to, um, to really um, maximize the federal participation, if you wonder about how to measure the impact of your prevention work, if you're worried about um, uh, whether or not your prevention work might actually negatively impact the demand on, uh, uh, for services on your partners, or if you're wondering about um, how you connect your FFPSA work to other prevention work, uh, we're going to try to help you answer that um, uh, this morning in the next couple of minutes. If you are an ILT member, an interagency leadership team member uh, underneath the Assembly Bill 2083 work, I hope that you'll come away with some ideas about how to uh, embed and connect the work of your planning process for uh, comprehensive prevention planning within the system of care. If you're less familiar with the system of care effort, I, I hope you'll come away at the very least inspired in the next uh, 10 minutes about how you can engage your senior managers in your county systems to, uh, to embed the work there. By way of context, uh, the uh, empiricism on program implementation would suggest that um, uh, partnership is needed and that within that partnership, we have to attend to um, issues and processes uh, at the policy and leadership level, at the management level, and then ultimately at the practice and community level. So this is complex work. And it really invites us into a shared sandbox where we can um, avail ourselves of the resources and expertise, wisdom of our education partners, our behavioral health partners, our regional center partners, our public health partners, um, and our tribal community. So this is a, this is a comprehensive prevention plan and that while it's, it lies primarily with child welfare and probation in terms of the federal vision, um, it's best done, and particularly in California's uh, perspective about this, what's beautiful about California's approach is that it really is intended to, to, to have an impact at multiple levels. Next slide. So the Assembly Bill 2083 work, uh, about two years old now, a little over two years, invites and demands that each county have a memorandum of understanding. And the, the MOU that anchors the Assembly Bill 2083 System of Care Work for Children and Youth um, was intentionally structured for opportunities like FFPSA. And we'll make that clear in the next couple of slides. It's within the interagency leadership and the related conversations where you will best um, be able to do things like identify who your local candidate population is going to be that'll inform your plan. It's where you'll best um, be able to identify what services to offer and by which local agency. 
um, how to leverage and account for the various um, funding streams, those at the state, federal, and local level, and ultimately how to develop a good um, comprehensive plan. So it really invites us to think bigger, uh, and the system of care is prepared uh, if, if your county has invested in that or if it's prepared to invest in that as you start the CPP planning process, um, you, you'll be well positioned. The, the quote here at the bottom of this slide is from the state system of care toolkit. And I'll just give you a chance to reflect on that, that that's really what we're talking about here. Uh, and so on some level, FFPSA is uh, perfectly positioned to take advantage of the system of care work underneath Assembly Bill 2083. Next slide. So as we break this down a little bit, um, if, if you are a, an FFPSA planner, uh, you know that in the state's guidance, and I'll just pause for a moment and just celebrate and acknowledge uh, Cheryl and others at uh, the state for that beautifully crafted letter in March that she's referenced a couple of times already. Um, it, it really does spell out the imperative of being in partnership to do a good comprehensive prevention plan. But you know that there are nine domains that are, um, are uh, expected uh, within your planning process in terms of uh, particularly how you assess your readiness. And so on the right hand side, so on the left hand side, you'll see those nine domains represented. And I just want to quickly visually point out that on the right hand side of this, um, five of your 11 system of care MOU elements are in that memorandum and in a, in a cross-agency, multi-agency agreement just for this purpose. You can, you can begin to see the alignment then and the readiness uh, issues that you can address within a system of care. Um, the, the five um, elements of that MOU that are most salient or most critical to a good comprehensive prevention planning process include how you're going to maximize the financial resources, where your interagency leadership team will create a vision for your prevention work, um, how you will screen, assess, and enter care. And in this case, candidates is a new population, right, that you're going to be able to serve, um, how you're going to address the workforce issues, and of course, how you'll deal with information and data sharing. So um, that MOU then is perfectly situated as an architectural blueprint for how you would engage in a planning process for FFPSA. Um, you'll see here uh, a, a kind of a visual representation um, that, I, that I hope makes clear that uh, FFPSA is not the only opportunity to inform your comprehensive prevention plan. Um, there are in every single county other parallel prevention and diversion efforts that really should be connected to um, and inform your more comprehensive prevention plan. So as you look around the circles in this graphic, um, your partners in or adjacent to child welfare and probation are already doing tier one, and tier two kinds of things. These are prevention frameworks that are already in place uh, in, at some, in, some in some level or are about to be in place. They're, they may be emerging prevention uh, approaches, but you can see, and this is not a comprehensive list, I would add. So each of these uh, circles, um, visually, ideologically at least, connects to and should have a place within what eventuates in your county as a comprehensive prevention plan. I'll just point out that, that each of them, and the reason that they connect, and the reason that, that this is such a, um, a powerful opportunity is uh, each of these efforts on some level requires its own needs assessment and kind of gaps determination, right? Each of, each of these efforts requires uh, a planning and reporting process. There, there's compliance efforts uh, in, in each of these efforts. Uh, you'll have to gather data around program impact and monitoring the outcomes of, of these um, prevention efforts. And of course, there are fiscal dynamics that underscore each of these efforts. Why not do all of that together with your partners? They're, they're already doing it with you. Um, you may not know it, uh, depending upon how well integrated your system is. Um, and the big irony here, and the reason that this CPP opportunity in California is so powerful, is that so often we're already serving the same youth or family, and we, we don't even know it. Or we're trying to prevent or divert care into an early interventive community-based 
um, support or service system, and the other systems don't even know it. So you can imagine then um, if we have a brand new prevention system and we have candidates identified as, as expected under FFPSA part one, those young people may already be getting preventative diversionary care in community. And how will we know that if we're not in partnership with others? Um, so it just underscores the, the need and opportunity present within a good comprehensive prevention plan. Next slide. Um, not to belabor the prior point, but here, here's a partial list of some of the just extraordinary opportunities. This is, this is um, a moment to celebrate the legislature and the, the governor and the secretary of health and human services and the, and the superintendent of schools for just supporting with, um, with incredible resources, uh, probably way too more, way more than we can spend in California next three or four years, right? But these are the opportunities, all which connect around prevention or early intervention. And um, you, you can begin to see where the, the potential, the, the grandiosity, if you will, of a of good comprehensive prevention plan and the reach of that will be maximized when we're connected to these efforts. We don't have time today to explore them all, um, but to, to the point of, um, of our little conversation right now, only when you're connected to your interagency partners through the system of care can you begin to structure a conversation each month uh, or however often you need to have it around what are you all doing with your Cal AIM work, right? What, what's first five doing right now that already connects to our part one plan? What are our, uh, our state Cal MHSA school grants doing that could be leveraged as part of our FFPSA or comprehensive prevention plan, right? So again, way too numerous to count, but these are just some of the exceptional opportunities that are available um, to us. Next slide. So as you think about how to engage the interagency leadership team within your system of care work uh, in your county, um, some, of the, some of the inquiry that might be useful uh, as you go there is uh, uh, talk to them about what first steps or talk with your partners about what first steps are needed for us to begin planning. Where would you like to go? What's the vision for us locally? How will the plan be captured? And it'll be important and I think the state will provide us with um, a project management tool or some kind of a document for us to, to kind of scaffold ourselves on, um, so to speak, but you're gonna wanna make sure you document that and, and, and use that in, as an, in an interagency way, if you will. <clears throat> It'll be super, super important that fiscal managers know and understand each other in a way that lets them um, analyze and evaluate how to maximize the shared revenue opportunities, how to develop the, um, the structure for matching the 50% that comes out of, of um, Washington and then the additional monies that come from Sacramento along with your local money. Um, you're you're going to hear either today or tomorrow about um, the need to spend the Medi-Cal dollars first. And so your uh, county mental health plan, your public health uh, department, they're going to have to be at the table uh, for your fiscal folks to make good planning conversations and then ultimately inform your plan about how to how to do that payer of first resort, payer of last resort um, dynamic, if you will. Additional questions that the ILT uh, might benefit from hearing about is uh, what existing prevention services or supports are in place that you can leverage. You heard Cheryl talk about um, some of those. Um, and then ultimately, uh, what, what's the data that each partner has under their current existent historic prevention work that might inform our plan? There's no need in some cases to um, replicate or create redundant data analyses. You may have data, your partners may have data at their fingertips from having just done some kind of a needs assessment, right? Um, some of that data might be present within your system improvement plan, your, your county self-assessment. It may be present from uh, your probation partners who are obligated to do uh, some analysis under their Juvenile Justice Crime Prevention Act or Youth Offender Block Grant work. The schools are doing local control accountability planning. Um, the county mental health plans oversee a mental health services act um, PEI plan that every three years or so has to do uh, some stakeholder inquiry. There may be some information data present there. Um, public health partners are constantly doing uh, community-based data. Um, and, and, um, and so there are just numerous opportunities to evaluate what existing data is present. And it's the interagency leadership team where you can best 
inform yourselves and your partners about hey this is what our this is what our recent data says and this is where we can um, can begin to share uh, our data going forward um, next slide and i apologize for the abbreviations um, spell all those out. Um, so uh, let me just emphasize here that um, these are outcomes that come from the system of care work and uh, this comes from about 35 years of research. And so I'm not going to belabor any detail here other than to just give you a moment to reflect on, um, on these uh, impacts and recognize, I hope, that these are the almost identical kinds of impacts that any good comprehensive prevention plan would seek. In other words, the same outcomes that we desire from a comprehensive prevention plan are possible and present within good system of care work. Hypothetically then, by, um, by induction, if we had been doing good interagency system of care work in California for the past 30, 35 years, when we first attempted it, um, we'd have these outcomes already. And so things like FFPSA and CalAIM would be a, um, an afterthought, right? We wouldn't need those tools, frankly. And so um, the, the, the goals of uh, FFPSA and a good comprehensive prevention plan will be maximized when we are in partnership with others and we're far more likely to reach the outcomes and have the impact that we desire by being in the same sandbox um, with, with others. Um, these are the same, in essence, the same goals or will be similar goals to what you'll, you'll seek to do underneath your comprehensive prevention plan. So finally, um, uh, as I wind up my a brief time with you, some recommendations uh, for you. And again, apologize for the abbreviations. I'll, um, I'll try to speak these out as best I can. But um, as you consider how to connect the work of your uh, comprehensive prevention planning process, uh, as it's required by FFPSA and uh, and the system of care work, uh, you'll want to ensure that your interagency leadership team, that ultimate um, management body within your county, is meeting frequently and supportively. And I I say this as the I offer this as the first recommendation because we know that there are in many counties, um, at least per the MOUs that we've seen, interagency leadership bodies that do not meet frequently enough. Frankly, in all honesty, they're they're meeting quarterly or semi annually. And you will not get the work done um, in, in an interagency partnership that does not meet more frequently to, um, to allow you to address the kinds of planning processes that are required here. So encourage, support, some adaptation if necessary, get the ILT members into a more frequent meeting. Um, and of course, then obviously you want to agenda routine um, prevention planning work within that ILT agenda. So it becomes almost a standing item, right? So use that hopefully monthly interagency leadership team process to actually um, agendize and deal with the prevention planning issues that are needed. As I mentioned already, you'll wanna connect your respective fiscal managers. It's not too early to make sure they're introduced to each other from various departments and get them into some conversation around the fact that they're going to need to do a whole lot of work in the next uh, eight or nine months to work out the technical details of the, um, the revenue sharing. Uh, the ILT is a great place to, um, as I've already pointed out, I, I do the identified gaps analysis and readiness work. Um, this work overlaps again with public health, with your system improvement plan and your county self-assessment, with the Mental Health Services Act, and with the local control accountability planning work under um, the school's um, tier one and tier two work uh, under local control. So that the, the members of the ILT will know what those things are in their respective domains. But often we don't know what they are outside of the domain, but it's in that partnership again, where you can put the puzzle pieces together. You'll want to begin to um, ponder on um, a little more specifically what an approach might be within uh, uh, how you'll apply the FFPSA dollars and one of the um, uh, brainstorms I've heard from a couple of counties is that they're, they're planning to, to kind of expand their red team process. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, 
uh, red team very um, briefly is um, a kind of a mini triage process whereby child welfare and in some counties mental health uh, get together on a relatively frequent basis, sometimes on a daily basis to triage the referrals that come into Child Protective Services, right? In a broader, from a broader perspective and to apply a comprehensive prevention plan, you could imagine then an expanded red team, right? With other partners at the table um, to triage, not just FFPSA candidacy, but triage all of the youth needs within our community, within our system of care. Um, it's expansive. It would take some um, planning, but uh, has, I think, potential um, um, power, if you will. The ILT is also a place where um, you'll want to have conversations around uh, how do we maximize or leverage the existing parallel processes within the child abuse prevention, within, within the community. So things like the Child Abuse Prevention Council, um, inviting them to represent on some level or to report to or to inform the interagency leadership team. Um, the Juvenile Justice Commission is active in your county uh, on some level, depending upon your county size. And they, they could be a vibrant partner in, uh, in linking some of the prevention work. Uh, again, the, the Mental Health Services Act triannual, uh, triannual process um, can be linked into the ILT along with the local control accountability plan. So the, the, the ultimate takeaway here is um, that uh, the, the development of an effective shared programming approach uh, can't be seen as transactional, right? You can't go into this interagency conversation to create a comprehensive plan and, and expect to barter, right? We're not gonna trade resources. What we have to encourage ourselves through the interagency leadership team is to embrace this opportunity as transformational, that it's a way we change the mindset uh, and the culture of how we do our work, um, uh, so to speak. Um, I see a quick question uh, from Amber uh, at Glenn around who should be on the ILT. That ILT membership is defined by your MOU and Glenn County has a nice MOU. So I would um, refer you back to your senior management team to take a look at your MOU. It's typically um, department heads or deputies, along with the superintendent of school, the executive director of the regional center, and other folks within your county. So um, uh, head back to your MOU where that's captured. Um, I would also, I probably should add, I left one off, um, one of the other parallel processes to make sure is connected to the interagency leadership team as you contemplate planning is, uh, of course, the first five commission, right? Um, there's 20 years of legacy of great prevention work. And that's gotta be uh, at least an informative, if not an integrated piece of a good comprehensive prevention plan. Sorry, there was one more question about the timeframes for the 2083 outcome data. Mm -hmm. um, so I apologize, I missed that question. Um, let me just take a stab at that. Uh, oh, I see, what are the timeframes? So, um, so thanks for the question. I wish that there were outcome demands, uh, a mandate for monitoring of the 2083 work. There is no expectation within uh, AB 2083 that you, um, that you document or establish system of care impact. There's none present. What I'm trying to suggest, I think, is um, the, and the outcomes I referenced earlier that come from the national research on system of care, that those are simply the same goals that you'll have established, right? Within your comprehensive prevention plan. You're going to hear um, uh, after the break at some point from a San Diego County. And I just want to uh, um, uh, put them on the spot ahead of time and suggest it's a fantastic example uh, of what, uh, can, what, what can be done and what is possible when you are in high collaborative partnership for prevention work. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of effort. They've invested a decade. Uh, in, in the work, um, but you're going to hear a, a fantastic example about exactly what we're talking about, about anchoring uh, comprehensive prevention within an interagency approach and using uh, that interagency conversation to do that. Um, my final takeaway is just uh, a, a, um, an invitation to um, head back home, if you will, so to speak, to your ILT, your interagency leadership team, and just make sure that they own and steward collectively the comprehensive prevention plan work and um, can give you some personal ass uh, uh, assurance that if you'll do that with some thoughtfulness, your uh, planning process will be 
um, more impactful, uh, will result in a, a, a broader, a more actionable plan. You'll have more resources present um, because you'll be sharing and ultimately your, your FFPSA work and your comprehensive prevention plan will be uh, much more effective.